Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Joe Hindi from AndroidAuthority.com, and it's that time of year when Google starts giving us presents. We all now have Android P, and it's time to take a closer look. The first thing we'll look at are some of the UI changes. As per the norm, there are no major league changes this year, but rather some colorful tweaks here and there to improve or otherwise optimize the UI. To start with, the startup screen and experience is a little bit different than it was before. It does all of the same stuff that it used to do, but it just looks a little bit different. It's not a huge deal, but we thought we'd mention it. Notifications got just a little bit better. Now messaging applications can show the last few messages in a conversation in case you want to continue it directly from the notification rather than opening the full app. It also now shows stickers and things like that. The improvements here basically put the entire application in your notification shade, and honestly, I wouldn't be shocked if they went the distance with that idea eventually. The settings menu received yet another overhaul from last year. The icons are more colorful, and the whole thing is a little friendlier to look at. In addition, the quick settings also have more colorful and rounded icons. The launcher actually does too. In fact, the whole UI looks a little more colorful and fun all around. Some may wish for a more professional UI, but frankly the technology world could do with fewer sticks shoved up their rear ends. Frankly, I like it. Some other UI changes include the removal of the orange color when you turn on battery saver. In addition, the volume slider now sits on the side of the screen instead of on top, and this is likely to improve usability on devices with a notch. But we'll discuss the notch more later. The power menu rests there as well, and it now includes a new screenshot button. We hope that one makes it to production, cause that would rock. The biggest new UI feature is support for the oft-hated but often imitated notch. The OS lets you play with the notch cutout, I suspect, so that people like me can make these videos and actually show you what it'll look like. And for that, I say thank you, Google. In any case, you can simulate the notch if you really want to, although I'm not really sure why any of us would. Since 2018 is probably going to be the year of the notch, it's good that Android P will actually support it. Here's hoping that all those phones actually do get Android P. There are a myriad of smaller things as well, such as a unified fingerprint scanner dialog, changes to controls while casting video, and minor improvements to ambient display. There are some bad things though, root users and non-root users alike will lose the ability to use substratum theming in Android P. Since stock Android has no theming of its own yet, that decision kind of sucks. There aren't nearly as many big new features this year as there were in the last few years. We don't have multi-window or picture-in-picture -picture level stuff to play around with this time around, and it seems like Android P is really dealing more with under-the-hood stuff, security, and UI changes. Thus, there really aren't any huge new features. But there is at least one feature worth talking about. Android P now lets you rotate your screen on a use-by-use -use basis, even if your rotation is locked. You rotate the screen, and a little button pops up on the navigation bar at the bottom. Press it, and the whole screen will rotate for you. This feature is a tad buggy in the developer preview, but we assume it'll get better over time. It's a small thing, but it's so nice to have now. Like we said, it's not a good year for big new software features. The majority of things this year are taking place in the UI, under the hood, or in regards to security. It's not that big of a deal though, since we've all been complaining about all of those things for the last few years. As per the norm these days, the majority of the changes are going to take place under the hood where we can't see them, but companies can use them to make their phones better or more useful. There is a giant list, so we'll talk about the big ones and then maybe a few others, but we'll have the list of all of them linked up in the video description below. Perhaps the biggest under the hood change comes with dual camera support. A new API lets devices and applications access multiple cameras at the same time. Given how dual cameras is now a thing that is for real here to stay, it's good to see Android P keeping the OS updated for new technology. In addition, a host of new video and image codecs are going to be included. Those worried that their phones might not support the latest and greatest stuff shouldn't worry because Android P should add all of the popular new stuff, like the HEIF format that one day may kill off the JPEG, along with continued support for the VP9 streaming video codec. There is a new API for indoor positioning and Wi-Fi round-trip time. This lets your phone connect to multiple Wi-Fi hotspots inside of a building so that it can better tell you where you are within that building. Google says that the device will measure its distance between three nearby access points and then determine the position based on that. It should actually be accurate within one to two meters, and that's honestly impressive. 
A couple of other new APIs include a new image decoder API for bitmaps and drawable stuff as well as a new animation API. That includes improvements to Kotlin and Art as well. Consumers won't deal with these directly, but it should help developers make better looking applications that do more things and that's always good news. Some stuff from previous versions of Android received updates and improvements as well. Notification channels can do a few more things and there are also a couple of new do not disturb priority categories for those who really want to customize that. Those mode gets another round of updates and optimizations for even better battery life, and autofill is getting some improvements as well. Accessibility, navigation, tooltips dialogue, a neural network API, and window changing details are all in the mix as well. Again, we have all that linked up in the video description below if you want to learn more about that stuff. Google's security measures have been pretty big over the years. The start of monthly security updates was Google's idea, and last year we got Google Play Protect, which is basically an antivirus that Google runs from within Google Play. This year we're getting some more awesome stuff with Android P. For starters, Android P will block access to sensors, microphone, and camera to applications that aren't currently active. That means no applications can passively listen or turn your camera on in the background. On one hand, this is great because it means no applications can spy on you. We would like to see how this affects anti-theft apps like Cerberus, however, where it may need to engage the camera remotely to take a picture of the thief. We assume it won't mess with that functionality too much. Android P does a few other small things to improve security as well. It will now fake MAC addresses when you connect to public Wi-Fi so that you can't be tracked so easily. Additionally, it'll do a better job of protecting your unique device identifier, improve sensitive data transactions, and even warn us, the consumer, when we're using old apps that aren't on the latest APIs, since those could present security risks and performance issues. Android P also enables encryption of locally stored Android backups. People will need their PIN, password, pattern, etc. in order to restore data from these encrypted backups. Finally, Android P will block unencrypted HTTP traffic by default, and that should help security out quite a bit. However, applications do need to be updated to the latest SDK before that becomes a real thing, otherwise they will perform as they always have. It's important to keep in mind that this is the first developer preview of the year. That means a lot of this stuff is up for grabs in terms of changes and removal, and it also means that there will certainly be more changes and improvements coming down the line as the OS matures. This really is a developer preview of Android P, meaning that it's for developers to make their apps work with the OS before it becomes standard. According to Google, the next developer preview should come in early May, and that should bring more stability and improvements. Two more are coming in June, with the third developer preview finalizing the APIs for the full release. There will be one more developer preview sometime after July, but before release in quarter three of this year. Thus, if you find that Android P just isn't good enough yet, you really don't have that long to wait. In our testing, we ran into the usual array of small bugs and issues, but nothing so bad as to affect pure usability. We, of course, wouldn't recommend using this as a daily driver because it is an alpha, and alphas have all kinds of nasty little surprises that even we may have missed. If you really must use it, we recommend familiarizing yourself with how to roll back to Oreo first, just in case you need to. Otherwise, this is it folks, this is Android P so far. We have a bunch of articles on the topic linked up in the video description below, and we do have some more videos coming through the pipeline. We'll keep you updated as Android P matures. As for the name, your guess is as good as mine at this point. I totally wanted it to be Android Pie, but the Easter egg makes a good case for Google going with Android Peppermint. If you want to wager a guess, leave us a comment and tell us what you want it to be. Oh wait, I almost forgot. This is what the Android P Easter egg looks like. Okay, now I'm done. And that about does it for this one, folks. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to get the latest Android Authority videos as soon as they come out because we are your source for all things Android. As always, thanks for watching, everybody, and have a wonderful day.